This week on The Wire, higher prices expected in spring, sales success hits two year high, and borrowers win a landmark case. Welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in finance, real estate, and investment. Before we kick it off, guys, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether it be things like home ownership, travel, and lifestyle, or early retirement. We do it using only only what people currently have available to them right now, and we do it with very high customer satisfaction ratings. If you're first time tuning in, welcome, or if you're a long time follower, thanks for joining us again, guys. We love the fact that you spend your time with us, and uh, of course, without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. Now, of course, we also love to see your interaction with these posts, so please like, love, angry question, comment, tell us what you think, tell us how you feel, and the only other thing that I ask uh, is for you to share these videos with your friends and family through your social media platforms um, so that they can get the benefit of this valuable information as well. But let's get stuck into the top stories happening this week. So higher prices expected in spring. So house hunters with plan to take action this spring will need to be fast and decisive or be prepared to expand their budgets. So fewer homeowners are listing their properties for sale, but there are a rising number of prospective buyers. Now this higher demand, lower supply dynamic will put more pressure on buyers to offer higher prices or more generous purchasing terms. It's a big change from the conditions of the past two years where when listing numbers were up and buyer demand was down. Now buyers have been coming back into the market since the federal election, interest rate cuts and relaxed lending criteria have hit the market. SQM Research Director Louis Christo Christopher says the recent uh, says the issue for those seeking a home is that the recent uplift in buyer confidence was not being matched by improved sentiment among sellers. Spring is usually the busiest time of the year for listings, and this year's spring selling season will be a real test for the market, uh, uh, Louis Christopher says. Uh, there'll be more sellers than in winter, but it doesn't look like there will be as many as in previous years. So moving on to our second top story for the week, sales success hits two year high. So the national auction clearance rate achieved, achieved a two year high of 76.6% last weekend based on core logic figures. And this is providing evidence of further strengthening of house prices. This was well above the previous week's final clearance rate of 67.8% despite the total number of scheduled auctions rising. Leading the pack was Sydney with a clearance rate of 81.7%. Uh, then was Melbourne at 78.3% uh, and then Canberra at 81.8%. Perth came in at fourth at 71.4% and then of course Adelaide at 70.4% respectively. Now CoreLogic's daily index shows house prices are set to rise moderately again in August, building on the small gains recorded by Sydney and Melbourne uh, over the past two months. Domain, which recorded a 73.4% national clearance figure, reported the top result was the sale of a Turak home Home for 7.05 million bucks. Now moving on to our last top story for the week, borrowers win landmark case. So Westpac has had a win over ASIC in the federal court, which experts believe will prompt borrowers to celebrate. So the federal court dismissed allegations made by the corporate regulator ASIC that Westpac breached responsible lending obligations in issuing home loans to more than a quarter of a million applicants through the use of the household expenditure measure, the HEM bench. Park. Now, Justice Nye Param found a bank could never fully assess a borrower's expenses because a borrower had the power to change some of their expenses after taking on a loan so they can make the payments. Um, speaking of the judgment, Associate Professor Mark Humphrey Jenner from the you know, uh, University of New South Wales Business School says ASIC should be cautious about being too litigious. This is a landmark case for responsible lending and no doubt many prospective borrowers will be raising a glass of Shiraz to the judgment. He says many people spend more than what they need to because they can. When they have to budget, they can reduce their expenditure. In short, the decision was eminently sensible. So that covers off our top stories happening this week. Uh, now, before I go, guys, just a couple of uh, um, uh, housekeeping items. Uh, so once again, thanks for tuning in. Of course, we love to see your reactions. So don't forget to comment, question, uh, like, love, angry. Also, don't forget our Just Ask Tim video series, which I normally do on a Tuesday each week. So if you've got a question that you want me to talk about in more detail or something you specifically want me to answer, 
be sure to send those through. You can send them through our social media platforms, uh, whether it's me personally, at Tim Guest AU, or Infinite Wealth, which is at Infinite Wealth AU. You can contact us there. Also, don't forget to share these videos with your friends and family so they can get the benefit of this valuable information. And guys, that is it from me. Have a, a great rest of the week. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll look forward to speaking to you guys in our Just Ask Tim video series early next week. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.